Greetings, fellow humans. I am Hugh. And I am Man. And together we are definitely not two, two kobolds, kobolds in a, a trench coat. coat. We enjoy human activities, such as paying taxes, having existential crises, and RPG horror, horror stories. stories. Let's see what we've got today. On today's episode, a party rewarded by the DM for dismembering the bard, a backseat DM on a power trip, and an encounter designed to kill a specific party member. Other players knocked me out and cut off my limbs, DM rewarded them for it. By Reddit user MiserableMessage12. We're playing a pretty ruthless campaign, and we all know that. However, what I was not prepared for was yesterday's session. My character, who has been the jolly bard with no enemies, playing in music and making food for the party, lost the MacGuffin a few sessions ago. I was attacked by the BBEG's vampire daughter, and she almost killed me and stole the MacGuffin I was carrying inside my ribcage. At the time, this was a very important step in my bard's character development, and we worked off of it very well with him losing all of his self-worth, having PTSD-induced panic attacks, and even self-harming at one point. This is where the horror story begins. My bard Yastrix has fallen asleep in the forest and wakes up to the two artificers, Tegrar and Engal, standing above him with the daughter that had assaulted me. Naturally, I acted out a panic attack due to this being the day after I was attacked to begin with. What happened next shocked me to my core. I expected a stern talking to, but instead my own party members attacked me, knocked me out, tortured me, and lastly sliced off my left arm and the thumb on my right hand and left me in the forest. All the while, the DM was laughing his butt off and complimenting them on being despicable and dark. After this, I was left in the forest and the two artificers went back to the daughter's house. She went, I'm sorry about your bard friend. Let me make it up to you. How about I enhance your weapons? and then buffed their weapons while I was left half dead and unconscious in the forest with nothing but a half useless character. Should I bring a bomb to the next session? Okay, so let's jump on that right away. Do not bring a bomb to the next session. We can definitely not advocate for that sort of violence. That's how you end up on some kind of list. And I think we would end up on that list also. Well, I think he might mean like in game. We can only hope. Although on the actual story, yeah, that's kind of messed up. I get it OP said they were playing a dark campaign, but they literally just permanently mutilated one of the characters, turned on him for no apparent reason. It's possible they may have been charmed by the vampire's daughter, but that doesn't make sense. They didn't mention that. The DM didn't mention it. It honestly ends up just reading like a form of bullying and they just wanted to target that player. I'm a little bit confused as to why the vampire daughter was there because she was the one that got the MacGuffin from the bard in the first place. So like, why would she be there? Why would they be working with her? Yeah, exactly. There's so much not said here. And if this is all just happening as it is, it makes no plot sense and just feels like a form of bullying. I get if, you know, you sort of flub things up and you lose a major artifact or in this case MacGuffin in a campaign like that does suck and you have to work it out as a party but that doesn't mean you mutilate a party member and then permanently damage them so that they can't do what they're supposed to do. Exactly unless there's something we're missing there's no reason to do it they've basically removed them from the game made it completely pointless to play this character and just turned on him for no reason it's just mean. Backseat DM chases me off on session zero within five minutes. My Reddit user Mogli19922. Of all places, the story starts on a Minecraft server looking for group post. I have the D&D add-on which I've wanted to play for a while. And this post was looking for D&D players. Perfect, right? Turns out they meant, but really didn't specify, actually play D&D. Even better. I joined the party and immediately this guy who isn't the host is arguing with someone else about why they would think the post on the Minecraft multiplayer page would be for an actual Minecraft game. I say, it actually says hashtag my world, which doesn't make any sense unless we were actually going to be joining a world. I ask what the deal is if we're not playing Minecraft and not host explains that it's actually D&D. DM is a kid in the party who has hardly said a word over not host. I think, hey, might as well roll with it, pun intended, and see how this goes. So I say, okay, cool, I'll knock up a character sheet on roll 20 quickly. 
Not host. You mean D20? Me. What? what? Not host. It's called a D20. The dice. Me. Oh, sorry, no. I'm using Roll20, the website to set up character sheets. That way you or DM can check if it's what you want. This starts a whole conversation where I explain the benefits of Roll20 and he keeps saying it's the same as an app on his phone. Which I checked out. It's just one of those D&D Google type apps where you can write in a creature or a spell and it comes up. Handy, but completely different. Here's where the issue comes up. Me. It's cool I found this post. I was talking to my DM today about wanting to play a Fry Queen Rogue at some point, which I just feel would be awesome. Not host without skipping a beat? Nope, you can't play that. Pick something people know. So I think, okay, new DM, fair play, I could just stick to the player's handbook. So I ask if there are any other books that are cool to use, and ask what other players are playing. Party chat at this point has gone from 8 players to 4. So I'm getting a real kick out of this not host guy because he keeps acting like he's an expert, but he knows like nothing. They're saying, okay, I'll roll up a character on roll 20. He's like, oh, you mean D20? Like, no, I mean roll 20. It's an app. And then he's like, oh yeah, I have that app on my phone. No, that's not what that is. To be fair, I don't actually know what a Thrycreen is. It's like a praying mantis person from the latest Spelljammer book. So not commonly known at this point, especially since I don't think Spelljammer did particularly well. It doesn't really matter, though, if I don't know what that is or anybody else doesn't know what that is, because the race really isn't important. It's more the class when it comes to, like, having a handle on who everybody is, because that's what gives you, you know, spells and what have you that are going to come up the most. It's like, yes, you have race racial features. They don't tend to come up as much as class features. Yeah, the class is ultimately more important in a lot of ways. However, this guy just saying you can't play it just because he doesn't know what it is. One, he's not the DM, and two, if he was, he should just look it up quickly and find out. That's what you do in D&D. Almost no one has the entirety of D&D memorized, even all the races. So as a DM, when you come across something like this, you just look it up. It takes a minute. Exactly. Don't limit your players just because you don't know what they're doing and you can't be bothered to look it up. Not host has no idea what comes from which book, which is fine, but he's a warforged. So I ask for clarification on what the issue with my race is. He says I need to pick something that people know and that a fry queen doesn't fit the setting. So I ask for more detail on the setting and where a robot from 400 years in the future fits in better than a wild space faring praying mantis. Then he says it's not his choice, it's the DMs who decides what races we can and can't use. This is when I find out that not host wasn't the DM, it was the kids who had literally gotten about two words in since I joined the party full of adults. Before I can even ask a follow-up question, he starts listing off every race in D&D aside from anything from Spelljammer. I could be an Asima, an Aarakocra, a Bugbear, a Yuanti, an Orc, Variant Human, any of those plus the Hampir. So at this point I'd realised the rule was, F you for pointing out that tag in the looking for group post. So I politely said I don't feel like I'm in the right group and I'll likely end up butting heads with not host a lot. Then I said, but before I go, just some friendly advice. You're not likely to ever learn everything in D&D. A player wanted to play a path of giant barbarian. I'd said I'd never heard of it, so I looked it up. It sounded awesome. And a character of a little girl with a basket of flowers that goes from 3 feet tall to 10 feet when she rages is hilarious. And it also leads to some great moments like an artificer and a paladin fighting their way out through the lobby. And her just diving headfirst through a stained glass window as we reach outside. Or sitting on an assassin four times her size and pummeling him. I hadn't heard of Path of the Giant, but I looked it up and immediately loved the idea. Not host. Fine, I look it up. Yes, he still hadn't bothered to look. Brief pause. Not host. You can't play this. It's too similar to Warforged. Me. Well, in what possible way? Not host. Okay, fine. You can play a Fry Queen, but I'm going to have to nerf you a little bit. Me. No, you're not. Like I said, I'm leaving. But out of curiosity, what is it that you wanted to nerf? Not host? The Chameleon Carapace. AC 13 plus dex and change colour as an action for advantage on stealth checks. Is too similar to Warforged Integrated Protection. Plus one to AC and armour can't be removed against your will. And they also don't need sleep, which is the same as a Warforged. Warforged don't eat, drink, sleep, breathe, and are resistant to poison and immune to disease and can't be put to sleep by magic. Fry Queen doesn't need sleep, 
but does need to chill and can be put to sleep with magic. I wanted to explain how much of a big jerk he was being, and it's worth mentioning that all of this was said to me with an authoritative air of jerkishness. I decided that it was best to wish the DM good luck with his first time DMing, told him that I'm sure he'd do great, and left. Jesus effing Christ, that guy. Wow. You can't play it because it's too similar to my character, even though there's like maybe one or two similarities. What, do you want to be a special little snowflake? Well, in this case, yes. Every snowflake is unique and he has to be unique and special. Personally, I think that the chameleon care pace or whatever that is, is really not that similar. It's like they have an, an AC bonus, like that's about it. Yeah, it has a similar end effect, but gets there in a very different way. Barbarians gain armor through having deck stats and constitution in a different way when they're not wearing armor. There's several classes and races out there that can augment their armor class by other means, other than armor. Yeah, and his whole thing of like, oh, well, your character can't sleep, which is way too similar to my Warforged. It's like, you know who else doesn't sleep? Elves. They meditate. They don't actually sleep. Are you going to also say there can't be any elves in the campaign? Yeah, this guy just had to feel special. He had to feel unique. He couldn't tolerate anything that even infringed slightly on his character. And he's not even the DM either. He's just dominating this poor kid who I don't know if he knows the kid outside the game and it was something they were starting together. But if the kid's the DM, it's up to them. However, I wouldn't necessarily advise it as a kid DMing a game for a bunch of adults. That just feels like it would be way too much of a challenge for them and create a lot of difficulties. That's a disaster waiting to happen. And I think we already saw the beginnings of it. I feel like this game is going to be absolutely ridiculous and the backseat DM is just going to run everything and might as well have just been the DM. The DM designed an encounter specifically to kill my character by Reddit user ed0909. I was playing a Pathfinder 1E campaign and we were level 3 or 4, I don't remember well since it was a year and a half ago. We were a party made up of my wizard Thessalonian, a specialist form of transmutation school, a Barbaro who believed that magic is bad, a mesmerist, and a dragon rider. Prior to this, I already had a couple of problems with the campaign since the barbarian refused to let me buff her, which was the point of my character. Only in difficult fights did she allow herself to be buffed because she didn't realize I had used magic on her. While the dragon rider hated wizards and started insulting me from the moment that he arrived in the group, and my character never disrespected him at any time. And since I couldn't buff the two characters that benefited the most, I felt useless in combat. Apart from that, I couldn't use magic in public even though the campaign was in Varicia, since it was illegal to use magic in public, even when it was just prestidigitation to brush my teeth. The DM told me no because the guards could see it, even if I was there in an alley, since the magic was super visible, or a mage hand to open the unsealed door since the mage hand did not work like that. I mean, we've read stories before about having like a big no-no to magic and having it be majorly illegal. And this is kind of similar to that, where it's like you're sort of taking it to this massive extreme. You can't even do simple spells that literally nobody could see, like Mage Hand. Yeah, so the DM thinks that even in an alleyway, there'd be such a glow from the spells, it would illuminate an entire city block. And if you're going to have magic classes in your campaign, you need to be willing to allow magic in your world in some way, shape, or form, or else your magic users become absolutely useless. We were in session six or seven and finishing a very difficult dungeon. The dragon rider, who had a very min-maxed character and was a very experienced player, told us that some encounters were very difficult at our level. We had defeated the boss and only scattered minions remained on the top floor. Then we found some kind of demon with a challenge rating that was too high for our group according to what the player told us. We managed to defeat it with great difficulty. I even had to use a scroll that I had brought a copy of in my book. After that combat, we were already exhausted and almost without resources. We will open one last door with a kidnapped person. After me and another player were approached to liberate her, two enemy monks came out of the door next to me and started combat. I couldn't do anything since the room was very small and all my remaining spells were rays. So I tried to take the five foot step action. This is equivalent of disengage in 5e, but these enemies had an ability that made them immune to this and they followed you when you were doing this. 
They continued to attack me, seeing that I decided that I was going to receive an attack of opportunity in exchange for getting away from them, but they had the ability to grab you with attacks of opportunity, and they proceeded to continue attacking me, and I fell to zero HP. Then, when I was on the floor, they continued attacking me to kill me. When the fight ended and I died, the DM immediately said that dying was normal, and that I could make a new character at that very moment. I told him that I didn't feel like it, and I was going to leave the campaign. Then when the DM left, I told the other players that the combat was unfair, and I think that he did it on purpose, and another person on the server, who was observing, told me that the DM had asked him for advice on how to design an encounter to kill a wizard, and that he had told him that I wanted to do that because I was min-maxing, which was absurd since my character was the weakest in the group, and he himself was the one who helped me design the character build since I asked him to, the Dragon Rider player offered to pay for my resurrection so that I could continue playing later. But I said no, since after that I didn't want to play anymore, and the DM would probably refuse saying that there wasn't a druid sufficient level in the town. Okay yeah, so why on earth is the DM asking for advice on how to kill a wizard? They're literally asking for advice on how to kill the character that's a meme on how easy they are to kill. You just have to boop them to death. That's all you gotta do. You could literally kill a level 1 wizard with an unarmed strike that crits. Okay, they're, okay, they're not level 1, but they're still pretty low level. You don't need to put that much effort into killing them. Clearly the DM didn't really know what they were doing if they didn't know how to kill a wizard. <laughs> it just doesn't stack up. There was another character more min-max. This guy was not that min-maxed and not that much of a threat. This sounds like it may have been personal off table. The DM had something against the wizards. It just feels dodgy. It felt like they specifically isolated them and then threw something at them they had no chance of escaping whatsoever. Yeah, it does really feel like it was something off table that was very personal on the DM side at the very least. Like, we don't know what the dynamic was between the DM and the OP because they don't expand on that. But it just does feel very targeted because you're right. They weren't min-maxed. It was Dragon Rider that was min-maxed. And the DM helped build the character to begin with. And if the DM helped to build your character, why is he then going, magic, you can't use it at all? Yeah, they made it impossible to escape. They didn't need to use that grab thing. They could have given the wizard the chance to pull away. I get it you're supposed to roleplay as the enemies would, but it really felt very targeted. Well, given what the person that had been observing from the sidelines said, it was extremely targeted. It's just wild to me when DMs do this, because this isn't the first instance that we've seen of a DM purposefully targeting their players and specifically magic user players, because for whatever reason, DMs seem to not like magic user players. It's just so bizarre to me, because having that balance of non-magical combat and magical combat is part of what makes playing D&D or anything related to D&D and &D ET tabletop RPG so interesting, because you have people that have different ways of doing things and they manipulate the system to work for them, and that's what makes it so fun. Hey man. Hey what? Did you hear about the underappreciated Earth Genasi? No. He was taken for granite. <laughs> and with that, we have definitely not been two, two kobolds, kobolds in a, a trench coat. coat. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and make the necessary sacrifices to Tiamat. We'll see you next time.